all come on. All right, so we are live. Um, sorry, I got my phone way up there. So I'm excited. Um, I'm really excited for tonight because I prayed specifically for the Lord to do something to show us in the study tonight. Mm, okay. And I know he's going to. Um, so, wow, Pam was sitting right there ready to hit the button. <laughs> She's on there already. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Pam. It's good to see you, Pam. Yeah. Love you. Girl, we got to get you down here. I don't know what we're going to do. Are you still not there? Oh, gosh. No. Oh. No. no, but I have sure, I told her today, I said I have really been sympathizing with her because I went to town last night with Elena and when I went to go get in the car and turn to scoot in, oh, man, I had a sharp shooting pain in my back. And the first thing I thought of was Pam. Oh. <laughs> I thought of you, Pam, because she's having such a hard time getting in the car yeah. oh, to come so down here. So, but, and so we talked a little bit about it. I told her I was really sympathizing with her because every time I was in pain and talking to the Lord, I was praying for her, too. And, uh, but she said, uh, what was it she said back to me? Something about glory to God. We're going to be dancing, dancing on the beach in the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> you know? Amen. Yeah. You will. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's going to be good. It's going to be so good. So I kind of wait a, want to wait a little bit for a few more people to get on. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have uh, some things that I want to share before we actually go into the Bible study. Um, I wrote on the announcement today that, you know, it's like a short chapter, but it is there's going to be so much to unpack from it. Um, yeah, I've gotten quite a bit, actually, from the Holy Spirit about this. Did you? Good, 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 good. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first part of it, the first three uh, verses, boy, he was really uh -huh. speaking to me about that, actually, a lot, just, like, leading up to, you know, talking about what love is, so mm -hmm. he told me, he goes, these first three verses are very, very important for us to understand, so. Well, I have a question while we're okay. waiting. Okay. <clears throat> so it says, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels. Okay, what's your interpretation of tongues of men and angels? I think I know what that means, but I'm kind of questioning myself. Tongues of men and angels, what does that mean? Well, my, my Bible just says, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels. Yeah. So I think, I think the tongues is just referring to lang the different languages. Tongues of men, men and angels. So I wonder if that was like speaking in the spirit in tongues of angels, like speaking in well, tongues. Well, I believe it's yeah. a, yeah, the, tongues is a heavenly language, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It's the language that's spoken in heaven. So I'm sure, you know, the angels are in heaven. They have to understand that language and, you know, maybe they speak it too. Maybe that's the same language. I don't remember hearing angels speaking, but I can't say that I didn't either because everybody was talking at the same time when I was there. Well, I know that they do uh, speak because Gabriel spoke to Daniel and he spoke to Mary. Right. So right. So they do speak, but I don't know that they, like, I think as far as I understand angels, they respond to the word of God and they repeat the word of God. Mm -hmm. They don't really. Have, they don't have their own opinions. They don't have their own thoughts. They. No. I mean, they. Uh -huh. Their whole existence is the word of God, unless they. But they. They do speak. They do speak other things 
besides just speaking the word of God, because remember the angel uh, when um, John uh, bowed down to the angel and he said, he goes, don't bow down to me. So, I mean, right. they can still talk too, you know, right. but yeah, you're right though. They're, they have they're messengers. Angels are messengers. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, they're they messengers. have parameters, but they have oh. to stay in it's because they're servants. They serve God. That's right. their that is their job. And when we when we start praying uh in God's will and start praying the word, that's when they're activated. When they start hearing that, it's like they fill up that bowl with with the messages and they take that bowl to God. And they deliver that to God. And then that's, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's right, when they're right. activated is when they, you know, when right. we're inside those parameters, you know, and we're speaking those things that, you know, God told us to, like our, his whole <clears throat> word, his whole words that we're to speak and to pray and all those things that act, that our authority when we activate our authority that has been given to us by the blood of Jesus, as far as I understand, so I could be I could be totally off my nut here, but this is kind of how I understand is that go ahead, there, go ahead. There's a there's kind of a parameter, so we can't put God in a box, but we do have parameters, and right. so right. Um. Uh, we also have free will. Angels don't, I don't believe the angels, I mean, maybe they do, but they don't, like the fallen angels apparently did, like, go and um, Rebel. use free will. But, well, but it, that could so, be different, too, because they, they fell. Right. So, Talking about that, let me tell you. Let me okay. tell you a, a vision I had once. Falling a very, a very quick vision from their made. heavenly uh, God saw their hearts. Cecilia, what were you saying, Dale? Oh, I don't know. I didn't know if you could hear me, but I, I, I say, was going to tell you. I want to say hi to Mary real quick. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. I'm I just want to say hi to Mary real quick, and then Dale, go ahead. And I see you, Mary. God bless you. I'm glad that you're here tonight. Hi, Mary. Go ahead, Dale. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so the, the angels, I had a vision one time and, and, you know, where it came from, I don't know. These happen occasionally. And I just seemed like somebody that was dressed like somebody would be dressed in Jesus's day uh, with a robe on, long, kind of long, darkish hair, sitting up against a rock, kind of slumped, you know, like they're lazy. Mm. And for a few weeks, I kept saying, God, what was that? Was that Jesus? And then I was reading in Revelations about the description of Jesus. And I heard the Holy Spirit saying, you, know, you see what you're reading there? That's Jesus. What you seen was your angel. And what we was trying to tell you was you're not putting your angel to work. So I think they're saying you can command your angels to do things or your angel to do things. I don't right. know if that's relevant to what you were saying, but that's exactly what I was trying to say. We have to activate our angels. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I and what I was being mm -hmm. told is you're not putting your angel to work. <laughs> so Right, exactly. I'm like, okay, how do I do that? You know, I'm asking God how I do that. And I start speaking the word, start telling them what, what you want and you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. What needs yeah, to right. be done, I guess. So or requesting yeah. like, you know, I'm you I request uh, requesting too, like I'm always calling on the Lord to send out his warring angels to, mm -hmm. you know, to help with things that we need help with. Yeah. Exactly. Pam from Washington is on. Welcome, Pam. I was so good to see you. Yeah. We have like this little family here. You we know? do. And Mary, and Mary, um, her daughter had some real serious surgery that we've been praying for, and she came out real good with it. So, praise God for that. Yeah. I'm All right. So, 
Okay, we're starting to get people coming in here. I guess we could go ahead and pray and get started. Um, yeah. I want to share a little bit first before we go into the Bible study. So um, I'll, we'll just do that next. So Lord, we just thank you for tonight, Father God. I thank you for drawing everybody in, Lord, just making that time and, and reminding them uh, that we were here tonight. Uh, Lord, I pray that you bless everyone, Lord, that comes in and uh, listens and joins into the study with us in your Holy Spirit tonight. So, Father God, we're so excited. We are so excited because there's just something stirring, I know, Lord, that is uh, in this study here tonight. It's about love, and that is just the greatest thing. Your love is the greatest thing, Lord. And, um, Father God, we need to understand your love. We need to understand how to live um, in your love and that your love flows through us. That's the most important thing, I believe, that the message is here tonight. So we're asking your Holy Spirit to come and teach us and show us. Lord, I know that um, this is going to be really deep, um, yet I know that you're going to make it simple for us so that we can understand it. So I just pray for wisdom, Lord, uh, for all of us here tonight. I pray that our spiritual eyes and ears would be open to the fullest that they can be so that we can hear and understand your Holy Spirit as you teach us your word here tonight. So Mike and Kimberly and Dale and myself, Father God, we surrender ourselves to you completely, Lord, as vessels that you, your Holy Spirit can work through. And as we do that, Father God, and I love this prayer that you gave I am so grateful, Father God, that we can do this and know that everything that comes out of our mouth will only be that which your Holy Spirit would have us to speak, that we would never speak anything in error or anything of our own. So we surrender ourselves completely to you and we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come, have your perfect way and will here tonight and we will give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Amen. Praise yes. God. So I wanted to correct something that I I wanted to correct something. Um Saturday night we were talking about the solar eclipse and stuff there at the end, and I was talking about Israel that Israel uh for this the for three years in a row this year, uh twenty four, twenty five, and twenty six that, and I made the mistake of saying solar eclipse, I meant to say lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. uh, lunar eclipses, eclipse, eclipses of the, the moon, and the lunar eclipses are for Israel, and, and uh, the solar eclipses are for the Gentile world. So I meant to say lunar eclipse on Purim, and they did have uh, the lunar eclipse on Purim this year. Next year, 25, they're going to have a lunar eclipse. And also in 26, there will be a lunar eclipse. And that is just really kind of crazy <laughs> that for yeah, three years no no world, that they are having a lunar eclipse on the Feast of Purim. Uh, I understand that people, you know, try to kind of shy away from the eclipses. And I understand that because there's a lot of crazies out there um, that have got videos all over YouTube and Facebook, you know, uh, projecting all these prophetic things with the eclipses and stuff. And that, that gets it kind of crazy. And I understand we need to be careful. But this, what I'm talking about, here, um, I wanted to share with you, uh, I guess I will go with Psalms 19, uh, chapter 19 first. And uh, 
then after that, I got one more. And you might want to mark this in your Bible. I'm going to. Okay, so Psalms 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Um, I'm trying to get to a point to show that he did give us the heavens and the sky and the moon and the stars and all of that uh, for signs. So I'm, now I want to go to Genesis chapter 1, the very beginning. So chapter 1, verse, let me see, where does it start at? I didn't mark it. Um, verse 14, chapter 1. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse. of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs. And that was what I was really wanting to get to. I'll continue reading though. And it says, and for seasons and for days and for years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. Um, but what I was really trying to get to was that he, he, made, he said that he made them for signs and, um, if we look back at history, you know, and th throughout the Bible, you know, God always used uh, the heavens. I mean, that's how they always knew about the Feast of Trumpets. Um, when the Feast of Trumpets, they call the Fe Feast of Trumpets, um, uh, what is it, no, no day or no hour, because back before, you know, we had the internet and all that stuff, they actually had men that would go out on the hills outside of Jerusalem and they would watch for the new moon. And um, that's when they would, you know, blow the shofar back uh, to let them know that they, you know, that the new, new moon was seen because that's how they knew to begin the Feast of Trumpets. So, so there, and there's so many things, you know, um, in, in the Bible that, you know, that God used uh, the heavens for signs to, to speak to things. So um, I talked about this last Saturday about how uh, this Purim, which was Sunday, um, they, that Israel, you know, that there would be a lunar eclipse. And, you know, I looked at it and I saw that, that there's going to be another one next year and then another one the following year. And, you know, there's no coincidences with God. <laughs> there just isn't. And to me, that was a sign. That was definitely a sign. To have three lunar eclipses in a row, three years in a row, God is speaking. He's saying something. So what then is, today, what does the number me? three signify in the Bible, Cecilia? Three. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I can't think. Uh, finalizing? No, no, no. That's seven. Three. Mm -hmm. is, I don't know if there's anybody in the chat, if you know what three is. I can't remember right now offhand. Uh, let me ask Siri. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. So it's com completion? Completeness, wholeness, it's resurrection, and harmony. Say that again. Completeness, wholeness, resurrection, and harmony. 
Oh, wow. I thought seven was that. Okay. So three, I see where you're going with the three lunar eclipses. Mm -hmm. So three is completion, harmony. Wow. That can mean a lot of good things, but it sounds like good things. But today, the first day after Purim and the lunar eclipse, um, I don't know if you have all seen this or not in the news, but I'm going to read this to you. Uh, today, the United Nations Security Council demands an immediate ceasefire between Israel and the Palestinian group Hamas in the Gaza Strip and the release of all hostages as the United States abstains from the vote. In other words, uh, the United States turned their back on Israel. And um, they did not, it's not just a, you know, a soft, gentle encouragement to sustain from the ceasefire. It is a demand. Um, I actually did listen to the vice president. I hope I don't get in trouble for all talking about all this stuff, but so be it. Um, but, uh, and I have not listened to her, I don't think, but maybe one time all this time. But I did today because it just popped up and they were asking her uh, how strong of a stance will the United States take with the United Nations on this uh, demanding the ceasefire. And um, I can't remember her exact words, but she basically was saying that uh, they're, they're just kind of like um, on the fence. Not that they're on the fence half in favor of Israel, but they're on the face fence. They don't want to come out and uh, say that they've turned their back on Israel. Um, they don't want to say that they're going to do anything uh, to push and promote for this ceasefire. It's just, it's not good. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It didn't surprise me one bit when I heard this you know, that this would happen the day after the lunar eclipse on Purim. Mm -hmm. um, and I am so glad, I am so glad that the Lord had us do those prayers this last Saturday night for Israel and also for America, because in those prayers, I believe, you know, our hearts cried out to God, uh, showing the separation between us and those that the enemy is using um, in the government here in America and the stand that we took for it. And I, you know, I want to pray right now for him, you know, to, um, to put him in remembrance of what we prayed and asked for. And also um, because I know that, um, you don't do stuff like this. You just don't do stuff like this. There is times past in history, you know, and I didn't have time to go and do it today, but I, there are times past in history where there has been uh, government officials here, presidents, I guess I should say, um, that did turn their backs on Israel and they prayed, they paid a price for it. Um, one of the, uh, well, I'm not going to say no names, but um, <laughs> but you just don't do that. You don't do that and you don't get away with it. You know, his word says that he will bless those that blesses Israel and that he will curse those that curses Israel. He cannot go back on his word because if he goes back on his word for one, he's going to have to go back on his word for all. And he's, he's not, that's not the God that he is. So we need to be praying and watching because I believe that we will see some things take place from this. Um, and I don't know what this means for Israel, but we know that God has his hand on Israel. 
uh, and uh, <laughs> they're starting to look like Gideon's army. Yeah. Well, and you we're know. part of that. We're part of Israel. Mm -hmm. We are. We are part of Israel because we are grafted in. And so, right. what what we need to do as the body of Christ. This isn't just as far as political, but <clears throat> we need to call our leadership. We need to call the White House and say, we are the people. We are the nation of America. And right. we stand with Israel, whether you do or not. Yeah. And you will reap yeah. a harvest. Yeah. And from my experience from uh, being in politics, it will be good to call your uh, representatives and your senators let them know. Um, a marshal. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't remember. He's not caught up yet that we do studies on Mondays. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you're right, Kimberly. Yeah, we need to make sure that as God's people we stand up and we say we stand with the nation of israel we stand with biblical israel we stand with biblical right. israel right the the we don't you know, know the, go ahead i'm sorry you know I, i'm just seeing you know that they're talking out of both sides of their mouth i mean exactly I'm, I'm sorry to sound, sorry to sound crude but it you know well, that's exactly what this, they're doing. Yeah, because they said that, about it. Mm -hmm. and when yeah. it started out, they said that Israel had every right. Now, you know, I was thinking earlier, you know, because I was talking to the Lord and I he probably just, you know, uh, put it in my mind to think that if it was Mexico that did to us here in the United States what Hamas did to Israel. Right. There is no way, there is no way that we would not be going in there and doing whatever we had to do to get our the hostages back. And to, you know, especially if it had been an ongoing, I mean, look at, you know, this is this is not like a first time thing here, you know, the all the bombing and you know, every time that Israel, you know, tries to uh, have a ceasefire, which they have done since this has been going on, you know, uh, they just, Hamas starts, you know, sending their bombs. They, they don't recognize a ceasefire. Well, um, and the thing about it is, is that it's the, the leadership in Israel is just as corrupt as the leadership everywhere else. And we talked about this earlier, you and me, Cecilia. But I don't think that people understand that the, the leadership in Israel is not righteous leadership. That is why Israel, right. Israel, the people, they need to have God as their king. That's what he's trying to do is get, you know, get them to God as their king. And that's and, why all this is happening. I mean, really, we have to also see the, the whole picture here is that Jesus told us the things that, he, that was going to happen. And he told us why and to not be afraid um, because everything is in a process right now uh, right. for, for Israel to come back, you know, to Jesus, you know, so that, you know, they can receive their salvation. He died for them the same as he died for us. You know, and um, he's doing everything that he, that he can uh, to bring them back to him. And yeah. you know, it's it's a hard it's a hard thing for everyone. You know, but you know, there's nothing to fear. That's right. There's we nothing have nothing to, to fear. Mm -hmm. That we have to stand on faith. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Dave. Sorry. So the the three day. Or so the, the, the three lunar eclipses in Israel, I'm, I'm kind of back to that. I So I'm <clears> still <throat> chewing on that. Yeah, I'm still chewing on that because I think it really holds so much significance. I mean, 
everything he does is on purpose, right? So that the number three yes. has such a significance in the Bible. Jesus rose on the yes, third day. You know, um, three days was mentioned 21 different times just in the Gospels. And so what I found here was Jesus was adamant about the third day because it represents God's pattern of creating new life and establishing a covenant with humanity. And, you know, we just got done doing a three-day a three day fast, right? That's right. And mm -hmm. so the, the, the biblical fasting has to do with eliminating distractions for a spiritual purpose, right? So right. It, it hits the reset button for our souls and renews us from the inside out. So right. I personally believe I, I – I have no proof of this from anywhere. This is just a, a feeling that I have is that this three, these three lunar eclipses over the next three years happening on Purim, specifically on Purim, every, for, for three years in a row, right. it's going to be a, it's going to be a reset for his people from the inside out. Right. That's what that's what I see happening through through this. Right. And and, and, and remember, and, and remember what. Right. And remember what we were getting as we were doing the fast. I know I was. Repentance was the loudest thing that I heard through the fast. Mm -hmm. Repentance, mm -hmm. um, and uh, healing. You know, healing and repentance, mm -hmm. and. The, it's a preparation. We're in a, a, a state of preparation where, you know, he's trying, to, he's leading us in, in to repent, you know, get old soul wounds healed um, because he wants us strong. He wants us strong and he wants us um I can't think of the word that I want to say. I'm probably getting another word from him. <laughs> um, usually when I get stuck like this, there's another word that comes out. Um, he wants us strong, but uh, he wants us strong to be able to stand ready, you know, because of what's coming up ahead. We know something's coming up ahead. We pretty much all have an idea of what's coming up ahead, and we need to stand ready. Go ahead, Kimberly. So the Holy Spirit just reminded me that in Israel, <clears throat> they actually, so they actually uh, celebrate this day as Purim as well, because this was the day that King Ahasuerus um, made the decree that uh -huh. the Jews, <laughs> that the oh, Jews yes. can defend themselves against Haman and his army. So. Oh wow, um, Kimberly! <laughs> vigilance, vigilance is the word. That's yes, coming to my and mind. that's an answer from God in reaction to the United Nations. You know, making that what is it that they called it? The um, declaration or whatever it is. I'm gonna read it again. The United the United Nations Security Council demands doesn't say Whatever. you need, you should need to consider it demands an immediate ceasefire between Israel and the Palestinian group Hamas in the Gaza Strip and the or release what? and the release of all hostages as the United States abstains from the vote do you believe that the United States <clears throat> Who are supposed to be representing the people? It wasn't the United yeah. States, right? It, it was, was a devil. It was the <laughs> devil, and it was the devil working through our leadership. Yeah, and was. I'm telling you right now, this is this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the UN in New York. I'm seeing the ground split open, and they fall in, just like Cora's rebellion. I'm well, telling you, you know what. Right now. I was I prayed this afternoon. I prayed this afternoon for God move the unit the UN out of this country. Oh, move it's gonna be out of this out world. of this country. Yeah, it's yeah, gonna so, be gone. So the U.S. government right now is Haman. 
It's an illegitimate right. government. It's also the right? the Israeli government is also Haman. Think about it. Think about Amalek. it. Amalek. It's a spirit Amalek. of Amalek. Amalek. It, yeah. It's it, it is. It's it's like Haman. Haman, but yeah, it's Amalek. It's Amalek was the original uh, Haman person. Was in the line of Amalek. Right. That the yeah, Antichrist that, spirit took over. Yeah. You know. Right. So that that's Israel is Amalek, right? That right. That, so, but the the U.S. government has not a spirit of Amalek, but they are Haman because they're illegitimate. Ah, you see what I'm saying? Okay. So it's a little it's a little bit different because the Israeli government is not an illegitimate government. They didn't they didn't steal an election. No. Right? The, the, the <laughs> people that are in power here right now did. Right. They are Haman. Haman stole the power that he tried to take or that he did while he had it. Yeah, because he was trying to kill Ahasuerus. Because he was trying to kill uh, Well, he, he, he misused his power. He, he misused he his power. And they That's are vastly misusing here. their power right now as well. That's exactly but right. They, because they it's are, right. They are. The U.S. government is Haman. And then. If King Xerxes. Was it. Is this it Xerxes? I always thought it was Xerxes. Okay. So that. If, yeah. It just depends on what language you're. That yeah. works. If yeah. King Xerxes would have known, if he, if he would have known that Haman was using the power that he gave him to do what he was doing, he would have never gave him that power. He would, Haman would have never had that power, but he right. was using that power deceitfully, you know, behind the scenes just. The same way as what we're seeing now. Why steal and cheat? The same way as what we're seeing now. That is so sorry to think that who I, I'm not sure who it is that sits um, has the seat at the United uh, Nations Security Council for us. I don't know who's sitting in that, um, but they're a puppet, anyways. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter uh, who it is. Please protect. Please protect this. Yes, this so live tonight. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, right. But um, we do know. We 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 do know. Uh, we see Haman. We seen what Haman was doing, and we see right. now what he's doing. Oh yeah, and he's wow, going this to is I mean, how this is so obvious. The whole yep. thing, you know. This is why the Lord had us do the Esther fast. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. Dale, you're too quiet. What do you have to say here? Is this just? I mean, I'm just like. I'm just eating all this up. This is really good. What you what you're saying? Yeah, I know. It's God. Oh, it's good. it's good. God exposing and showing what's happening right now. So, right. Um, it's amazing. I I was excited yeah. this afternoon with what I saw, and, and I you know now I'm just even more. And but you know what? This is just the beginning here. We've not right. seen the end of it yet. Um, so we do, I, I do want us to pray though. Yeah. I'll wait. Mike will be right back. back. Oh yeah. He'll be right back. While I'm waiting uh, for him, I'm going to get some water. I'll be right back. Keep talking. I so can what do y'all think in the chat? Okay. So what it, all you people in the chat. So what do you think about this? I mean, uh, this is to me, I love this stuff. I absolutely love, I don't love the bad stuff. That's, don't get me wrong. Right. I don't, don't mean that. Right. I don't love the bad stuff. But you know what? In the announcement for the study tonight, uh, one of the last things I said was, Lord, show us your glory. 
And he is definitely showing us his glory here tonight. Right. When we see his hand moving um, in such ways as what we're talking about right now and the things that are happening, we are that is his glory. We are seeing his glory. We are seeing his power. And um, he's just he's just fixing to get started. <laughs> I'll throw in a little Southern thing there, but he is just fixing to get started. Um, you don't, you don't do this to Israel. You don't, right. uh, you don't play games with them. I mean, it's bad enough when you do something against them, but when you play games with them, that's, I think that's even going to be worse. So we need to pray for um, America we need to pray for our country and we need to pray for Israel. I believe that this whole thing with the fast of Esther um, was just the beginning. Um, Penny in the, in the chat room, she says, I believe more will be exposed. And she yeah. says, yes, it's getting started. Thank you, Penny. Yeah. yeah. We're coming into our glory days as, as the body of Christ. We really yes, are. We are. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we so I think uh, what I was just saying is that this whole Esther fast that God, you know, put on us to do was just the beginning and the opening of a door that yeah. um, this is a journey that we're on and um, there's going to, it's going to get, it's going to get crazy. <laughs> it's going to get gooder. Um, it's gonna get gooder. <laughs> yeah, so so I, I let's feel like watch watch for set. I'm not going to talk politics, but watch for September October. Mm -hmm. September right. October is going to be, be well. That's when, well. That's why this is interesting. That's why I believe the Lord's allowing things to go like they're going right now is because. He is wanting to expose. He is wanting to expose things um, because there's a lot of unfairness going on right now in this country. Uh, he, he, a lot of know, unfairness. There's a lot he's trying to expose because he's trying to wake everybody up and go, look, hello, I'm trying to send yep. you some signs, just like there's plenty of burning bushes out there, and we just need to stop. People need to stop and mm -hmm. say, okay, Lord, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and pay attention to what you're trying to tell me. There's a lot of warnings going on. There's a lot of signs. There's a lot of things going. God's like, hey, people, come back. Come back to your first love here. Right. Yeah, and it's, and I mean, it's also, really beyond all this other stuff. I mean, it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual battle, 100%. You know, it's not, well, it's not really even a political battle anymore. It has become a spiritual battle. It is good versus evil. Well, and that's why I'm saying that the, it, this is spiritual. This is spiritual Israel. So everybody who's mm -hmm. wrapped in and the and the people born Israelis, okay, Gentiles that are that are grafted in and the Israelis, mm -hmm. we are spiritual Israel, okay. And right. so this is a spiritual thing now. So like, what we have to remember is to differentiate between the earthly battle and the battle that's going on in the spirit. And we need to right. get our mind in the spirit. Amen. Right. And, and also too, go ahead. When we're, when we're seeing, no, that's okay. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, okay. When we're seeing stuff happen here in the earth, these battles, it's already been happening in the heavenlies. Everything yeah. happens in the heavenlies first before it happens in the earthly realm. So we're kind of just now seeing what's really been going on in the spiritual yeah. realm. And um, there was something else too. Oh, the Holy Spirit was reminding me too, and I, I, I need to just try to say this often as I can to bring us back to um, the fast and also the solar eclipse coming up um, is that the loudest thing I've heard him saying through all of this is repentance. 
And I want to keep saying that because I know people are coming in and out here. And um, you need, if you have not repented and got your life straightened around with the Lord, you need to do it now. Uh, things are going to start moving pretty quickly. This is what I feel in my spirit. I feel like things are going to start picking up because we are kind of on a time thing right now here with America. And um, there is a battle going on. And like we were just saying, what we're seeing here in the earth has already been happening in the heavenlies. And uh, the enemy is fighting really hard right now. Um, so he, I'm hearing something here. Okay. So just like with the prodigal son who left and went out and spent his fortune, uh, the older brother was in still at the house, still on the farm with the father. God's saying just because you're in the house with the father doesn't mean you're okay. You got to have a relationship, even though you're in the house with the father, you got to have a relationship. And like Friday night, last Friday night, Kimberly was saying we're in the fire. And that was pretty strong. We were in the spirit. But if you're not covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, being in the fire can be very, very dangerous. So be careful. I mean, yeah. let's let's make sure that we're in the house with the Father, but also have a relationship with the Father, and covered by the blood, which kind of goes along with one to the other. That's what it's all about, Dale. What you just said right there. Um, that's what all the repentance is about. That's what all this getting all the you know wounds healed in your life is all about. Is because it is. It's what is going to either make or break your relationship with the Lord. And right now, you need that relationship with him. You know, because when it comes down to it, it's all about you and him. It has nothing to do with me or your brother or your sister or your mother or your father or your children. It has nothing to do with anybody else. When it comes right down to it, it's about you and Jesus. Where are you and Jesus? You need him more now Amen. Uh, than you can. Amen. Yes. I'm I'm hearing that I'm hearing the Holy Spirit tell us that we need to start operating in the spirit because and not like the woo-woo stuff, like but we are spirit. We are spiritual beings. We have spiritual authority. We that's why we can hear from the Holy Spirit, because we have spiritual authority. So we need to begin operating in that spiritual authority. Like the, the body of Christ is not operating in that to the degree that it should. Um, we have way more power than we, we act like we do. We act like we're these little delicate daisies and we're not. So no. if you're acting like a delicate daisy, put your big girl panties on and grow up. You got to grow up. Cutesy time is over. Amen. So, I'm so I, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying like love is Come patient. Well, no, that's that's okay. that's one of the main things that we heard we've been hearing and, and not just us. I mean right, the, right. Uh, all the believers have been hearing because I, I hear it echoing all over the place from all different people is that you know the Holy Spirit is speaking and saying that you know, it's time that we stand up and start using our power and authority that he has right. given us, mm -hmm. you know, and the other night, you know, I just heard, you know, it's like, it's not just to sit in our lap, but it's to be picked up and used because yeah. we are in a battle. We are in spiritual warfare and, you know, it is the Lord's battle. It is the Lord's battle, but we're his vessels. You know, he works through us. We can't just sit back and twiddle our thumbs. We right. have to be active. We do have to become active. And um, being af active means putting yourself out there in a position that he can use you, whatever that means right. to you in your life. But you have to put yourself in a position that makes it available for you to be that vessel that he can work through and use, whether that's in Walmart, in the doctor's office, you know, in your church, online, or wherever, you know, wherever he, you know, takes you. Because if you're surrendered to him and you say, Lord, use me today, he'll take you somewhere and he will yeah. use you. 
Um, right. And if, if you're not paying attention, if you're not paying attention to what the Lord's telling you, he may give you something to get your attention. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, and we're to be like Joshua and Caleb. This is the Amen. day, this is the day of Joshua and Caleb. <laughs> yes. But what does it say? It says the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Right. Right. Amen. right. We are going to take it by force. It's ours. And we see, God said we could have it. Because we see that promised land. We see that word. promised land coming closer. We're coming closer and closer and closer to that promised land. And who cares about what's going on in this world? Our yeah. focus is on Jesus and on that promised land. And I don't care if I look like a fool at all anymore. I'm going to speak what he wants me to speak. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's funny. We've been now talking for about, I don't know, 45 <laughs> minutes or so. We still haven't gotten to First Corinthians 13. <laughs> however, however, everything we've been talking about Come on. is has to do with this. This we haven't even gotten to it yet, right? And it's everything we're talking right. about has to do with it. Because what is okay? What is what is our job as Christians? It's to reach back and bring somebody along with us, right? Well, we're here to glorify God. We're here to glorify right. God. But our earthly job is to reach back and to bring somebody with us, right? Right. And what greater way Amen. for us to do that than, than right what there. chapter 13 is talking about? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I knew just, you were sitting there smiling about something. I saw Mike sitting well, there smiling <laughs> for a few minutes. And I thought, something's going on was, up here. <laughs> well, yeah. I, mean, I was sitting there listening to you guys, and then I was looking at, at the chapter. And I was like, there, I mean, everything he does for us, no, no. there is no coincidence, none whatsoever, right? And I, I have not seen that more than I have in probably the last six months. And I've Pretty talked fun. about this before. I, I never saw myself sitting here. Never. Right. Amen. You guys right. you guys agreed with me, right? You never saw me sitting here either. No, that's not true. No, no, well, no. We but, <laughs> well, <laughs> But you never thought you never you never thought I would do it. But anyway, so right. But I never saw myself sitting here doing this. But I have never seen. I have never seen. Okay, Cecilia, we're back to it. The intentionality of of God, like I have in the last six months. Everything He oh, does God. serves a, a a very distinctive mm -hmm. purpose. For the, the 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 time that we spend together, every single time, it's crazy to me. Okay, I so know. you so how does what how does that old saying go? You you track more bees with honey, honey. than you do with vinegar. Yeah, yeah. I mean the more flies. The, <clears throat> oh no, bees too. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Either one, really. I mean, it would work. I'd but, rather not have flies. Too. So, but First Corinthians thirteen <laughs> is. It's entitled "Love is the Greatest." It is, yeah. I don't know. It just, you know, and his love is, is is all about sacrifice. You know, his his love, Jesus's love, is all about is sacrifice. Love. I can't wait to get into this chapter. So I don't know. Maybe maybe he's kind of nudging us. Get into the get. Let's go yeah. into the word. Let's go into the word. Um. Okay. Because I prayed for him to reveal to us tonight. This was my prayer. I prayed for him to reveal to us an understanding and um, a revelation of what this love is that he's talking about in this chapter. I want to totally get a revelation and an understanding because I believe it's so much more than what we realize at this minute. So let's see what he's going to show us. So I, I'm hearing that song right now. Let my heart see the truth, the truth of your love. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so um, I'm going to read the first three verses. And then okay. I'm going to kind of tell you what God kind of downloaded on me. Okay. So, oh, you know what? Before we get started... Let's pray for America and Israel. I, I don't want to get, 
I don't want to, I, I forgot I wanted to do that before we went into this study. So let's do that. And I'm not going to even say real quick, but let's pray before we end this part of the session tonight to um, go into this. So, and then Kimberly, you just go ahead and go right into that. So I'm going to go ahead and start and you guys can just jump in however you want to. Um, Lord, we just thank you. Uh, Jesus, oh my goodness, you're just so exciting, Lord. It is always, uh, it's like a, we're always like looking for treasure with you. And we all, you always let us find some, some treasures along the way, Lord. Um, this whole thing with the lunar eclipse, Lord, um, on Purim, and uh, there's, it's no coincidence, for one, that there's going to be three lunar eclipses on Purim for the next, for this year and the next two years. Uh, I pray throughout this evening, Lord, that you would speak to us more on this and about also the number three. Uh, and also, Father, I just um, know that there's no coincidence that the very next day, which... Kimberly has shared with us that the next day after Purim is, can you repeat that again, Kimberly? So the, the day that, um, I'm trying to think, okay. The day that, that Ahasuerus, stop it, sorry. <laughs> the day that Ahasuerus told, um, um, told made the decree that that Israel could defend itself, that the Jews could defend themselves against Haman and the armies, um, because right. he could not break his he could not break his own law that he sealed. Okay, but then he made right. a decree saying, "Yeah, they might come after you, but you can defend yourself." Well, that happened the day after. But they were free Haman. to fight against him. Right. Right. That happened the the day after okay. uh, um, Esther exposed Haman. So that was Rome. the day that... that after uh, the feast. Right. Yeah, it was after the day of the feast that yeah. they had. Mm -hmm. So just for those that are jumping on that, you know, are trying to under... I want to catch them up on what we're talking about here. Is that so? Yesterday was Purim, and there was a lunar eclipse, which the lunar eclipses always refer to Israel. The solar eclipse is always referred to the Gentile worlds. So, and there is going to be a lunar eclipse uh, this year, 2024. Next year on Purim, 2025, is going to be another lunar eclipse. And then 2026 on Purim is going to be another lunar eclipse. Now, I'm sorry, but that is not a coincidence. That is God, and that is him saying, uh, I read the scripture earlier, that he made uh, the, the stars and the sky and the sun and the moon for signs in Genesis yep. 1. And so it's not a coincidence. And um, I understand there's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now with the solar eclipse, and I'm not trying to be on that same bandwagon here. We're, we're speaking factual things. Uh, we're speaking factual historical things. And so today, as Kimberly just explained to us, the day after Purim was the day that King Xerxes, I'm going to say Xerxes, okay. <laughs> um, gave Esther the permission uh, to write up uh, was it a decree, I believe, that um, um, because Haman, uh, you know, was out to, he was out to destroy all the Jews. And unfortunately, he made a decree uh, without the uh, King Xerxes really understanding what was going on. Right. And uh, so that decree, you know, was signed with the king's signet ring and it could not be withdrawn so but after he found out the truth he gave esther the next day 
permission to write a decree that would give the Jews the right to fight and to protect themselves um, from the uh, armies of Persia that was going out to kill all the Jews. And of yes. course they won. You know, they always have the victory. The Jews always have the victory. And so that happened the next day. So here we are. Yesterday was Purim. They had the lunar eclipse. And uh, now I just, this is so exciting to me because I had no idea about the day after Purim. I knew that, but I didn't put the two and two together like the Holy Spirit just showed you. So yeah. here we are the day after Purim, which was the day that uh, uh, was today. she was, yeah, was today that she wrote the decree that the Jews uh, would have the right to defend themselves. Yeah. So yeah. on that day, today, the okay. United Nations Security Council demands an immediate ceasefire between Israel and the Palestinian group Hamas in the Gaza Strip and the release of all hostages as the United States abstains, uh, abstains from the vote. In other words, the United States, they were there the, uh, to vote, but they stood down. They didn't vote. So they Which was cowardly. Very cowardly. It was very cowardly. Yeah. They, you know, they tried turned their back on Israel because they started out in the beginning of this that Israel had the right to defend themselves. And now, you know, they're backing out of that. So, but all that put aside, I believe that the lunar eclipse, with it being on Purim and today being the day that Esther made the decree that the Jews had the right to defend themselves i believe that was god's stamp coming down on the united nations security council and saying no they have the right to defend themselves that's how i'm taking this well and i will say this israel has a part to play here and they have to stop being so stinking passive and they have to stop acting like we want everybody to like us Listen, you're Israel. Nobody likes you. None of the world likes. I mean, I love Israel, of course, you know, but I'm talking about governments don't like you. The world. They don't like you. You're talking the spirit yeah. of the world. The spirit of the world, right? Okay. But God's people, we are Israel. And this isn't replacement theology. This is not replacement theology. Please hear me. Please, right. please hear me. We are grafted in. It's to, exactly. Right. We are spiritual Israel. That is what the enemy hates. He hates spiritual Israel. That includes yes. you. That includes me. That includes all of the Jews. Okay. He hates them. And yeah. And I want to throw in here. I, I Were you done, Kimberly? I don't want to interrupt you. Yeah. I want to throw in here too, you know, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say, you know, uh, Ephesians 6, to remember, you know, we're seeing all these government things going on and, you know, all this junk that's happening. Right. But to remember, Ephesians 6 says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness. And that's that's the bottom line here with everything. You know, mm -hmm. there is a war going on in the heavenlies, and now uh, we're seeing it here happening on earth. Um, that's how things go. Everything happens in the heavenlies first, and then it manifests in the physical world. So we're seeing this. This is a spiritual war. This is the spirit of Antichrist who is coming against Israel, who is coming against the body of Christ, 
because like Kimberly was just saying, we are grafted in, you know, we are part of the vine. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches and we have been grafted in. He's after all of us. And um, because when he sees us, he sees Jesus. Amen. When he sees Israel, he knows he is doing everything he can to keep them back. But he knows. Yeah. He, he, he knows the word. He knows the word better than most Christians know it. Um, <clears throat> and he knows that Jesus is, 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 the, is the Messiah, even though Israel doesn't know that. Right, right. But Israel, but he sees the signs and things falling into place. That he knows that Israel is going to call on Jesus. Their eyes are gonna, their he, their eyes are gonna be open. They're gonna realize that he is their true Messiah, and um, they're going to, they're gonna come home. So, who's reading the first three verses? Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, did, we, did we pray? We didn't even finish praying yet, Dale. I'm you started sorry. praying, but we haven't ended it yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Bless your hearts, those of you in the chat room and everybody listening, hanging in here with us. I pray that you're as excited as we are, though. I pray oh, this you is good. Are this is good. Because yes, because we are so close to seeing the face of Jesus. Do you realize that? Yeah. We yeah. are so close to seeing his face. So Lord, we just pray, Father God, right now. Um all of this, Lord, all of this that you are showing us, Lord. <laughs> It is only through your spirit that we could ever see these things. Mm -hmm. uh, it is only through your spirit and your love for us. And these are answered answers to the prayers that we've been praying, Father God, to give us revelation, to be able to see what's going on, what's happening right now in this world. Because we know, we know that when we look at things through our worldly eyes, through the flesh father god we just you know i mean that in itself is just pure deception but you in your grace and mercy and your great love for us you've forgiven us of all our sins father god you have forgiven us of all our shortcomings our mistakes and oh my goodness on and on and on you have been so faithful to love us with that unconditional love and compassion and mercy and grace and bringing us to this place to where our eyes can be open to be able to see the world and what's happening through your eyes. It's your eyes that you're allowing us to see through. And we're so grateful for that, Father God. And as we see these things that are happening right now, Father God, once again, we come to you in behalf of America and Israel again, Lord. Uh, I pray, Father God, um, that um, the spirit of Haman that is working yeah. through uh, the government, uh, that that branch of this country, Father God, will not affect those that are true Americans, those that truly follow you, Lord, that have surrendered their lives to you, that see and understand and know that this great nation, Father God, has been given and blessed to us by you, and the enemy is just trying to steal it and corrupt it, Lord. And um, I know that you're answering the prayers that we started praying Saturday night, and you're just taking us deeper. I pray for a separation from that spirit of Haman and all those that are being used by that spirit of Haman from the people of America, Lord, those that are still searching for you, even still, Lord, I pray for them also. Uh, Lord, you you are the only one that, that you, your word says that you look upon the hearts of man. You are the yeah. only one that can look upon the hearts of man here in America, Father God. Uh, you are the only one who can judge us. And uh, so, Father, use that 
use that judgment, use that 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 vision that you have to be able to look upon the hearts of man and protect the innocent, Father God. Protect the innocent. And I pray that you would bring down that spirit of Haman. I pray that he would be exposed quickly, Father God, um, in everyone that he is working through. I pray for exposure, Lord. Your your word says that uh, nothing is hidden, and so we pray for that. And we pray for the eyes of of all of those that you see and are having that grace and mercy upon here in America, Father God. We pray, uh, Lord, that um, that they would be protected, that they would be protected. And um, I just pray protection over all of us. Father God, because I know the enemy is so mad at what's happening right now, uh, what you're do with what you're showing us in this ministry and those that are, you know, coming and listening. Father God, I know that he's mad, so I pray protection over this ministry and all of those that follow this ministry. Um, Lord, we plead your blood over all of us, and we pray for Israel right now too. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this strong confirmation um, that. Israel has a right to defend themselves against this spirit of Haman that is trying to pressure them and make them feel that they've done something wrong, which I know that they don't. I know that they don't. I know that they're much smarter than that, but it's just such a sneaky, evil way that the enemy is trying to come against them. And uh, we take authority over that, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I take this authority over that spirit of Haman that is, and it's actually the spirit of uh, Amalek, Father God, that is coming against uh, Israel. And we pray for those, uh, Lord, that have their eyes open, the Jews that, that have their eyes open, and all of those that live in Israel. There's people from all countries around the world that uh, serve you, Father God, that are living there in Israel. We pray protection over all of them, Father God, and I pray that you would open their eyes too to see the things that you've revealed to us, Father God, and even more, Lord, um, that they would see and um, be aware of everything that's going on around them in the spirit, Father God, and we pray protection over them and guard all of their hearts lord guard all of their hearts against the lies of the enemy to think that they cannot protect themselves father god and we pray for those hostages father god i pray for a supernatural na supernatural release of the hostages that are still alive in gaza father god that um they would be just handed over through your Holy Spirit in such a miraculous way that everybody would be looking to you, Father God, and giving you our honor and glory. And I just ask all of this in your precious name, Jesus, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. If you guys want to pray something, go ahead. Yes, Father God, I just... Um... I just ask, I I just come to you in the authority that you've given um, given me because of the blood of Jesus, Lord, and I just declare healing right now over this nation, Lord God, because we came and we prayed, we repented, we turned from our wicked ways, we cried out to heaven, and you said that if we do that that you would heal our nation. So I believe for healing in this nation right now, Father God. So Lord, people that are trying to lead this nation away from you, Father God, I ask that their influence be pulled down right now. Lord, that they would be exposed right now. Lord, and that the people, even the people that, had, that have had a veil over their face, Father God, I ask that they see things clearly right now. Father God, I ask that many, many, many people in this next week would um, cry out to you, Jesus, and declare that you are their Lord, that you are the Son of God, that you did die, that you died for their sins, that you you um, went into hell, stole the keys to sin and death, came back after three days, and now that that <clears throat> he is sitting at that you are sitting at God's right hand in glory, Father God. I just pray right now that. America steps back into the covenant nation that she was created to be. 
Lord, I ask that I declare, I declare that your people that are in this nation would stand up and raise their voices and that they would say that our king is God. We have no other king. We do not obey any king or besides God. If you are trying to lead us away from him, we will not obey. We stand and we say that the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violence taken by force. And we are taking it back by force right now, God, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Jesus. This is America. Mm -hmm. You have given yes. us this nation. You gave this, this nation to the world to be a city shining on a hill, not something that would turn into profanity and corruption and garbage. We, we claim this nation back right now. We claim this nation back as the kingdom of God, as, the, as, the, as part of the nation of Israel, because we are, we are spiritual Israel. We stand up. Our spirits rise up within us right now, and we stand in the authority that you have given us as your children, Father God. And we declare that we will not allow the enemy to to take this nation from us and we will not allow our children to be corrupted by this this evil evil administration so lord in jesus name i declare that america does belong to god that our spirits are one under god one nation under god and we take it back right now by force we will battle in the spirit we are battling in the spirit and we will prevail because God is our king. God is our king. And no yes. other. We declare this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Jesus. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard against him. Yes. Yes, Lord. And we just pray that we not lean to our own understanding, but we trust in you and what you have directed us to do and put our faith and trust in you. And like I said earlier, get back to our first love and just know that you are the source of everything. And we take authority, not just stand back. And as it's many times said that evil and and wickedness thrives and, and just and, and mutates when good men sit still and do nothing, Lord, we pray that we we will not sit still and do nothing, that we will do your will and what you want us to do and stand fast and uh, stand up for what is right. In Jesus' yes. name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, Okay. All right. Are you ready to read those three scriptures? <laughs> yes. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm right. I'm here. I just got to go turn my hair off. I'm freezing. I'll be right back. Okay. I can hear All you right. though. Okay. My, okay. So I'm reading chapter, or first Corinthians chapter 13 verses one through three. So it says, if I could speak in any language in heaven or on earth, but didn't love others, I would only be making meaningless noise, like a loud gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I knew all the mysteries of the future and knew everything about everything, but didn't love others, what good would I be? And if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to a mountain and make it move, without love, I would be no good to anybody. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would be of no value whatsoever. So what I'm hearing is <laughs> that if our children, okay, the, so it says that love is patient and love is kind, and right? Okay. So if Mike was my child, and I mean, <laughs> kind of, but anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, 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 focus up. 
If Mike was my child and, and we were standing on a street corner and he was about to run into the street in front of a bus, would I go, don't run in front of that bus. I'm being patient. I'm fine. But don't run in front of that bus. No, I would not do that. I would yank him out of the way of the bus. I'd probably throw him on the ground and then I'd pick him up and spank his butt because he didn't listen to me. That's what I would do. Okay. Right. Because that's then that's like that is love. That is love. Because that is kidding. someone from from destruction, right? Right. Because that bus could have destroyed him. There are things in this right. world that can destroy us. We know the truth. We are the keepers of the truth. Okay. But if we don't tell the truth. And if we don't patient, so sometimes, yes, we are going to have to say things over and over again, but there are people out there that aren't going to listen. So it is, uh, it's for us to be patient in, in our assignment from God to continue moving forward, not mm -hmm. to stay back and try to convince people that don't want to be convinced, right? Like we've planted the seed. Somebody else is going to come along and water it. Okay. Right. It is for us to be patient. We need to patiently be about our father's business. Okay. So right. it is not unkind to yank your child from out in front of a bus <laughs> and throw them on the ground right. and make spank their butt. I'm probably going to go to Facebook jail. I'm not, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying. No, you're going to be putting me in Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Lord God, please don't. No, worry. that's not going to happen. I rebuke that. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. But I'm just saying that our view, because we have this really worldly scope of love, right? But mm -hmm. we think that when when God says gentleness, kindness, goodness, right? He, when we think of that, we think of uh, somebody coming up to us and going. Don't you dare run in front of that bus. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. No, no. He's saying, please, you know, pronounce my word over them, but not in a way that is violent, right? Like, not in a way right. that you idiot, you know, like, don't you understand right. that this is God's word? You know, like, that's not gentle or kind. That's not kind. But so yeah. God is saying that we need to understand what love is. And what love is not. And the church right now is woke. And we don't understand what love is. We are allowing right. the world who doesn't even know God or love God to tell us how to behave as Christians. Right. They are not our king. They are no. not our king. God has told well, us how to behave. And in verse 2, where it yeah. says... And if I have, perf my, this is reading out of the uh, uh, the English Standard Version. Um, and if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries. Now, this is basically saying we got everything here. Okay. Right. We have prophetic powers. We have understanding of all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have all faith. So as to remove mountains, yeah. but have not love, I am nothing. Right. So if you have all these things, how is it that you cannot have love? In other words, what I'm seeing is... Um, Maybe I should read on verse three. If I give away all I have. This is all, give away all you have. Yeah. yeah. This is all uh, the stuff that the world, how, how the world defines love. You got to give away all your stuff. I, right. And if I deliver up my body to be burned. I mean, this is, this is describing somebody who just has all of this spiritual growth right? Yep. But have not love, I gain nothing. Right. 
And I would, you know, I was, I was asking the Lord, I said, how can this be? This, this is, this is showing someone who is so spiritually, you know, grown really high level to give up your body to be burned, but you have not love. How could, how could that person who is so spiritually grown miss love? How could they miss love? You know, and this is my thing that I'm coming away with. And I know that there's much more. That's why I prayed for him to show us more is that it's not our love. No. It has nothing to do with our love. There's no way that we can have a love that this is talking about. Right. There's no way that we can, no matter how much we grow, no matter how much knowledge that we have, uh, no matter how much we can sacrifice, no matter how much faith we can have that we could even move mountains. And it's we can. not our love. Yeah. It's, it's not our love. It's his love. It's his love that we're. So it's his love that we have to have. It has right. nothing to do with anything in us, you know, that uh, we can do to, you know, come up with growing, even growing into understanding and moving and working in this love that we've learned about. Mm -hmm. There's not, it, it's, it's nothing in us. It's him. It's right. his love. His love is the only love that this can be. Right. And, you know, right here in verse three, where it says, if I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would be of no value whatsoever. So, you know, what we do, what we do needs to be coming from our spirit. Not like, right. not what everybody can see us doing, right? Like, we're not going for recognition here. We're going for, you know, bringing people into the kingdom, you know, and, and telling the good news of Jesus. And, you know, we have a mountain right now. We have a mountain. And that mountain is the UN. That mountain is Satan. And we can cast that mountain away. It says it right here. Right. So we we think of we think of love as from from an earthly perspective because that's what we for the most part know, right? But we we think of love as an emotion. Mm -hmm. Love is not love is not an emotion, mm -hmm. right? Right. Love is a commitment in how we treat others. That's right. what love is. So love is kind. Love is patient. Um, it does not boast. It does not boast, right? Yeah. So, but. Love is serving others. That's what right. love is. So your feelings, your feelings don't matter. Your feelings aren't going to get you anywhere. The yeah. only thing your feelings are going to do are deceive and lie to you. And trip you up. Right. And trip you up, right? So, mm -hmm. but it, it, we have to stop looking at this from an earthly perspective. And we have to look at it through his eyes. What, right. what is, so we, we love is, I mean, uh, where am I trying to go with this? So <laughs> happiness is fleeting, right? Yeah. I have to laugh every time he does that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of laugh every time I do it too. So, but, but ha happiness is fleeting. It's a feeling. <clears throat> and everybody, mm -hmm. you know, you, Right now, we're we hear everybody talking about. I just want to be happy. No, you don't. You have no idea what you want. Yeah. You are That's searching true. for joy. Yeah. You are searching for peace. You're searching for Jesus. You're searching for Jesus. But you, right now, don't number one understand what happiness is. Number two, you have no idea what love is. Because if you did, you wouldn't be searching for it. Yep, you, would have it. you would have it. You would already know what it is. Mm -hmm. That's what he is talking about. That's here. right. I love where you're going. 
Yeah, exactly. I <laughs> love where you're going. I, right. I'll be honest with you, Cecilia. I don't know where I was going with this, <laughs> but he's, he's talking about he's talking about Most. serving his people. That is what love is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It has nothing to do That's with. Right. You now I love Kimberly. I I am in love with Kimberly. She is my wife. Right. Right. But that is not. From an earthly for, for, or from from a biblical perspective, that is not what we're talking about here. We are talking about the service of others. Yeah, right. we're, we're we're talking about right. reaching your hand back. This is where I was kind of going with this earlier. <clears throat> reaching your hand back and bringing somebody else along with you, because our job is to number one glorify God. Number two is to try to bring as many people as we can along with us to His glory. To his forgiveness, right. to his love. Exactly. That's what it's all about. Exactly. Yeah. Matching them out right. of the jaws of hell. Mm -hmm. And I see it as mm -hmm. us surrendering our love yeah. in replacement for his love to be used through us for others. Um, you know, and I don't mean to, to be, you know, saying anything wrong or bad about us because I'm including myself in this too, you know, but, you know, we read his word because we want to get closer to him. Right. We want to get closer to him because we want to feel his love, right? right. So, and it's, you know, and that's good. There's nothing bad about that. But what is, what, is, what is our goal when we're doing that? Our goal is about satisfying the love that we feel we have a need for. Right. His right. love is sacrificial. Mm -hmm. his, his love, and this is what you're, you're saying here, Mike, and, you know, and I think this is where he's taken us, is when we, you know, can uh, surrender this love that is like our love because this love that we have inside of us is for ourselves also. His love is not for himself at all. You know, mm. his love is totally sacrificed to serving others. And, and so we have to surrender this love that we have been living with, you know, completely to him in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, exchange for his love to replace that. And in doing that, we're sacrificing any love that we would have and want for ourselves. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, love, love is a huge sacrifice, right? Think about so if you have kids, think about your kids. Think about what it would take for your kids to do something for you to stop loving your kid. What would it take? Yeah. That's the kind of love that God has for us. There is nothing that we can do to get him to stop loving us. Right. He, he always has. He always will. Right. So. It's an agape love, right? As, right. as the, the, the Bible describes it, it's an un, it's a, it's an right. unchanging, never-ending, uh, unwavering love that that He has for us, and that 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 is the kind of love that He's wanting to portray through us to to lead other people to Him. So, if you're if you're standing on the street corners with your, you know. Uh, <sighs> Bible thumping, uh, you know, West Texas Bible Belt, you know, you're going to hell message. Stop it. Mm -hmm. You're not going to bring anybody with you uh -uh. using that message. <coughs> Sit down beside somebody, have a conversation. Sit down beside mm -hmm. that guy on the street and ask him what his name is. Mm -hmm. Ask when him what his story is. Mm-hmm. When you were talking just a minute before about how his love is never ending, mm -hmm. 
I just seen him. I felt like the Holy Spirit was showing me and saying, yeah, and on that day of judgment, when I have to see my children go to hell, I'm still going to be loving them. Amen. Man. He's still going to be loving them. How his heart must be breaking. Yeah. Well, those people that go to hell will not. I don't think he'll consider them his children. Maybe his creation, but his children will follow him. Well, but yeah, he, that's true. Yeah. But they were his creation. He did love yeah. them. You know. Yeah, he is. They, they, they are created in his likeness. I don't. I didn't mean to uh, correct you. I didn't. No, yeah, you, I wasn't saying, yeah. you didn't. You um, were just thinking it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying that, you know, his children will want to be with him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. His yeah. true children, his yeah. true children. Yeah. It's just, it's, yeah. you know, and th that's why we have to fight. Yeah. You know, we really have to fight for people. We have to fight for those people that, you know, are trapped and lost and victims of the enemy that have been so hurt that they're, they're trapped in darkness. You know, I believe that there are people, you know, out there that, you know, became victims of the enemy through hurts, you know, as little children, we see that all the time here mm -hmm. at the ministry. <laughs> Yeah, we see people that come in with soul wounds that are just totally broken. Yeah. We see people that um, and that are not nice. Right. They are not nice because they have spirits, you know, from when they were a small child being sexually molested. Yeah. But you we know see what? People at church that aren't nice. Right. But, you know, we don't know what caused them, what caused them to not be nice. You know, I believe that that's those, for one, it's those spirits that are in them trying to keep them uh, from anybody wanting to help them. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Which is, you know, you what, know and, that's what, and, that's, and that's what this love is. Yeah, that's this what this is us saying that mountain that they that they have between us and there between God and them, we have to cast it away and come in right. and and show them what God's love looks like. And you right. know, I will tell you this: there were times growing up. You know, I grew up in a in a church system that said you had to dress perfectly, your house had to look perfect, you had to have all the nicest things. You you know. You couldn't let anybody know that you messed up or anything like that. And the person that literally showed me God's love was a person who invited me to her house and her house was a mess. <laughs> and I was like, that, that set me free. Like, you know what? She was a hot mess, but right. she was, she was kind to me in her house. She right. served me, you know, snacks and tea and all that stuff. And her kids were running around everywhere. And I mean, it was, it was chaos, but there right. was love there. There was love there. And we were comfortable because it wasn't like so stuffy and so perfect that we couldn't just be ourselves there. And she just loved on us, you know, right. and it didn't matter after about five minutes. It didn't matter the chaos that was happening around us. Cause we just felt loved. We just felt right. loved. Yeah. I think that's, the, that's what he's getting us to is to understand the love mm -hmm. that is in him that we need in us because if we don't have love, we have nothing. That's we right. can't do anything for the kingdom if we don't, don't have that love, you know? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
So, so should we yeah, move on? Yeah. <laughs> Where we're at, yeah. verse eight. Four. 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 Verse four. four. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So I'll read. I'll, I'll read from here. Okay. Okay. So first, first Corinthians thirteen, verse four. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no records of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejo rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never lose faith. It always It's always hopeful and endures throughout every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in, in unknown languages or tongues and, and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. So essentially, everything... The only thing that's going to remain is love. Right. Right. That's essentially what, what he's telling. The, Without the, love, none of these things even mean anything. And that's that, right. And really have no value. That's right. Yep. Yep. Without, without love, that nothing else matters. Right. Literally, nothing else matters. Um, So we're uh, verse 11. Verse 11. Yeah. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. Mm -hmm. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. Yeah. So I've, I've contemplated. I, this is, okay, I've. He tells us to have faith like a child, right? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> and then right here he's saying, you know, Paul is telling the Corinthians that he put away childish things. But now he, he and now we see things imperfectly. So, if he wants us to keep a childlike faith, mm -hmm. then if we have the capacity, which don't get me wrong, I don't believe that we do, or no, let me say it differently. I don't believe that we strive to continue to have a childlike faith as we become adults. If we were, if we did, this would not be a possibility, right? right? Because right. then, I, I, I'm i still very, okay, so I, I've been a Christian my whole life. My dad was a pastor. I fought against it for a long, long time. So I feel like I'm still in, in infancy in, in my faith, in my, in my walk, in my journey. So for me, I still feel like I have, uh, I get giddy. I get, I mean... <laughs> I, I, I come to a realization and I'm like, holy cow, that's freaking cool, man. Right. <laughs> but you know, I still kind of, I still, I think I still kind of have a childlike faith because it's, uh, how do I, how do I describe it? it it's just, for me, it's, it's still very easy. Yes. Now I'm jaded yeah. by the world. Okay. So don't, I don't, do believe, I do believe that that is because you are so open to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I think that is a, a big thing too. Because right. I get goofy. You guys see me. I mean, and Kimberly, I mean, my goodness, she's always, you know, going <laughs> off the chain. <laughs> and Dale, he's yeah, who I mean, knows the kind of faces he makes, he hides back. Right, right. <laughs> so, but I mean, you know, like we we've been through we've been through some things here over the last, you know, three to five years that uh, has really completely changed my entire outlook on everything. Right, mm -hmm. 
and, I, and I've, I've talked about it a little bit in the past, but, you know, with Kim going through her cancer battle and me sitting there, I was always the fixer before. I always felt like it was right. my job to fix everything. Well, sitting there, this wasn't something that I could fix. So I was left sitting there thinking, okay, so what's my part? What am I supposed to do, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's exactly right. And it was for me to simply have faith. And right. I had never done that before. Ooh, I feel so. I feel some living water rising <laughs> up in my belly. And I and I had never so- done that before. So. <laughs> But me having that faith, I mean, I was Kim's caregiver, right? I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So all I could do was what she asked me to do, essentially, because I, I'm not, I was never trained to be a caregiver. I, I never learned how to do that. I was an EMT, but we were a scoop and run, you know, kind of medicine. I know that's kind of a gruesome way to say it, but that's, I apologize. But that's essentially what an EMT yeah. is. You scoop them, throw them in the ambulance, and you run them to the hospital. But right. you know, I mean, but being a caregiver, I, that was never. I mean, I, I never saw that in even part of my DNA. That just was never something that I wanted to do. But I kept my faith. I did what I was supposed to do blindly because I had no other way to do it. If I'm being honest, right. that was a season that he was. That was teaching. a season, right? And mm-hmm. but that was that was the most. That was probably the most eye-opening season of my entire life. I'll be 50 this year, and that was the most eye-opening season of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Not being able to yeah. do anything. So I wow. think that well, children that was- like comes in where okay if when you're seeing things with your earthly eyes that look impossible but your faith inside you goes i know the god of the right you guys know free with my faith okay because i still believe in miracles yeah, I, the childlike faith just means that you still believe in your heart in the things that look impossible around you. Like, you know, a child can pretend they're a unicorn, you know, like, and they're perfectly fine with, like, you know, just without abandon, you know, acting like a unicorn right or acting like a puppy or and and so there's that that, just to clarify these are children okay these are not these are not pre-adolescent teenagers whatever (laughs) these are children that she's talking about yes i feel like this needs to be clarified okay i'm just saying because with our (laughs) grown-up eyes (laughs) <laughs> and, our, and our, you know, the, when we're looking and we're seeing everything around us, we believe more with our eyes than we do with the spirit of God living on the inside of us. Mm-hmm. We got to stop that because right. this world, this, what's going on in heaven is way more real than what's happening here. This is well, yeah. Show. yeah. And it's like, you know, I was saying earlier, um, what we see happening here on earth is uh, after the fact of what's happened in the spiritual realm. Yes. You know, what happens on earth happens in the spiritual realm first before we see it manifested here on the earth. And that right there tells us what you're saying, Kimberly, is that this world is not as real as people think that it is. It's really a a lot of mirages. We have to know and go by the word of God. The word of God is the only thing that is real to us in this world and his Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. And uh, a lot of times, you know, that's why 
And you'll hear other, you know, preachers and stuff say, too, that, you know, God will call us to do and say things that are just so, you know, uh, off the wall. But we do it. We do it. And we step out in boldness when we do that, because he, he his world, even though we're in this world, his world is, is in the spiritual realm. But yet it is so much more real than what we're seeing here in this world. And we have to kind of fall into understanding that and to move in that. I believe that's what you're trying to say, Kimberly, yeah, is that yeah. we have to, you know, live in this world um, the way that we would be living in the spiritual realm because the spiritual realm is more real and more true than this realm here there is you know just so much um deception especially now in these last days that we're in there's just surrounded by deception and and lies and uh delusions um what was it uh penny was saying today penny just did a new painting today and oh my gosh when i looked at it i it just i almost i could say was wow because she painted a woman and she just, it didn't look like a, any other painting that I've ever seen. It looked mm -hmm. biblical. And um, she said, she was talking about a strong delusion. And oh. I believe, that, you know, we're, we're seeing that right now. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there is a strong delusion exactly. going on and um, the enemy is the one who's putting that strong delusion out there in so many ways, you know. Right. So, right. anyways. Exactly. Yeah. We only have a few more scriptures left if you want to go ahead and finish that up, Mike. Uh, where did I stop at, you Cecilia? Stopped, um, uh, 12. Oh, no, you, you read 12. Yeah, so three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. I just got a revelation on that. Okay. I just got a revelation on that. Because God okay. is love. And he is forever. Like faith, hope, and love. Faith is us, right? So he gave us faith. He gave us hope. He is love. That's why the greatest mm -hmm. of those things is love right that's pretty amazing and it's yeah. his love that we have to have that's right there's yeah. we could we can be so you know full of wisdom and revelation and knowledge and faith and all these things you know that paul is speaking here we can have mm -hmm. all of these things and be moving in it and full of it but we have to have his love. And to, how do we get his love? This is what I'm thinking. This is what I feel like the point is, is that how do we get his love? I mean, we have his love. You know, he has given us his love. But how do we get his love in that capacity that the love inside of us is his love working through us, that sacrificial love? I think that takes faith and hope. Yeah, I do. I think that takes faith and hope. That's the only way we can really do it. Because mm -hmm. So now faith, faith. Yeah, to, to have faith. And you know what? The scripture right before here is kind of like a hint to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have become fully known. I remember the scripture um was always a mystery to me and i would read it i would hear people quote it i would hear people preach about it and there was just a block i could not get it and it was just frustrating for me this was years that went by and it was like one of the great mysteries it's like god why can't i understand this could you please you know show what does this mean it was just there was so much mystery there well, I had moved down here to Florida 
and this was in 93. And I had a little screened in porch on the back at the time. And I was sitting out there. I used to go out there and do my Bible studies. And I was reading it. I need to read it out of the King James real quick here. Let me find it. Um, so I'm sitting out there and I'm reading this scripture. What verse is that? 12. 12 and 13. Okay. You know what? I might have made a mistake here. I was thinking this was the one about looking through a glass darkly, but that's not it, is it? No. Okay. So kind of <clears throat> the same thing. It's kind of like it's saying, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully. This is almost identical to that scripture about how we look through a glass darkly. Um, even as I have been fully known. But anyways, I got the revelation. I mean, I'm just sitting out there reading that scripture, which... I believe that, that scripture and this scripture are really, really close to saying, well, they're definitely saying the same thing. Um, and I just so, got the revelation. It's like the light went on. Yeah. Go ahead. So it is. The, so I'm reading the Geneva Bible translation here. Uh huh. It, it is the same uh, scripture. Huh? Is it the same scripture? So it says, yeah. For, we know, for now we see through a glass darkly, but That's then it. shall we see face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and love, even these three, but the chiefest of these is love. So, so what, what does the Bible tell us about faith? All we need is faith of a mustard seed, right? Yep, we all have the same. Mm -hmm. Which he's given us, all of faith. Which he's given us. We all have the same amount of faith, right? Same measure, yeah. Right? Hope is instilled in us mm -hmm. with that. Right. <clears throat> Love is is us uh, serving his people. So what is it? I think the question was... Um, Gosh, it so so you you asked a question, Cecilia, a few minutes yeah, ago. Yeah, I asked the question. I said, so you know, we have our love, you know, we have our mm. love, you know, and that contains a multiple of things, and then we have Jesus's love. But I believe what this is saying that just the same as um, we surrender ourselves to him for all this other stuff we need to surrender our love to him in uh what was the word i used <laughs> i can't remember it again in um uh lord help me here um exchange, yes, exchange. that we exchange oh. our love for his <laughs> Exactly. So, yes. So now I'm reading. Okay. So I also pulled up the Jubilee Bible. Okay. And it uh -huh. says, and I was like, oh, no. Okay. So it says, so this is verse 12. It says, for now we see through a mirror in darkness. When you look through a mirror in darkness, like you can still see, right? Right. But there's no light. There's no light. So you can't see the details. But he says, but then we shall see face to face. He's talking about love. We right. will. So right now, we don't. We don't have all the details. When we right. see God face to face, we will have all the details. And it says, 
Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as I am known. And God said, he knows us fully. He knows us intimately. We will know him completely when we meet right. him face to face. That's, that's right. pretty much it. Yeah. So it's an exchange. It's an exchange. Right. Yeah. So I guess yeah. where I was, I was going with that was, <clears throat> I think the question was something along the lines of <coughs> how do we get there, essentially, right? right. How do we get the love? Yeah. How do we get the love? Yes. So right. if if we all have the same amount of faith, mm -hmm. if we all have the hope through the faith and the love, then how do we get there? It, it all has to do with, I believe, two things. Number one, it has to do with believing, using that, using mm -hmm. that faith, using that hope, and and right. the love that it gives us. But it also has to do with surrender. Because we can realize the hope, we can realize the, the faith, and we can realize the love. But unless we do something with it, it doesn't matter. And that's wow. what it's talking about in the first three verses of uh, 1 Corinthians 13. If we don't use those gifts that he has given us because we don't believe that they're true, it's worthless. Right. Through us, it's worthless. But if we believe that it's true and it's real and that God is real and that the only way that we can, can be redeemed is by his son, Jesus Christ, and we go out and we act upon the, the, the faith, hope, and love that he has given us. That's how we realize those, those gifts, right? But if we're going to sit back in, 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 the, in the shadows and do nothing. So this is, this is the only place that I believe that works come into play. You know, we've got numerous religions out there that say that you've got to, you have to do something to get to heaven. No, you don't. The only thing you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But if you're, if, if you're not going to take the love and the hope and the faith and, and the faith that he's given us and go out and bring more people to him, he's not going to know you when you get there. Yeah. Right. He's not going to, he's not going to look at you and say, good and faithful servant. You have to, you have to, yeah. well, faith without works, is faith, dead. faith without works is dead. That's the only time that faith work plays any part in, in his. And his, works without love is dead and works without love is dead. That's right. Yeah. So now I, I pulled up the complete Jewish Bible. So this, I think will sew it all together. Okay. It says, okay. for now we see obscurely in a mirror, but then it will be face to face. Now I know partly, then I will be known fully, just as God has fully known me. Be but for now, but for now, three things last. Trust, hope, and love, or faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. So, yeah. So, and he's saying here, so the other thing that the Holy Spirit showed me is that our faith isn't childish, it's childlike. We do childish right. things. We 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 act like right. like uh, children. You know that that um, we just don't know. We don't know all the things. Well, but our spirit does know. Our spirit does know, and right. it hasn't been tainted by the world. God, okay, I'm done now. I won't pull up any more scriptures. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's fine. That's fine. That's that's good. I'm still, I'm still finding my way through the love though. Um, yeah. Because I, I feel what the Holy Spirit is saying and I'm not getting the full fullness of it yet. Yeah, is that there is a replacement that surrender brings us to. Um, of exchanging our love in a like a sacrifice, like sacrificing and saying, I surrender all my love 
to you in exchange for your love to come and, and take its place so that when I am walking in the spirit, I am walking in your love, not my love. Right. Cecilia? That makes sense. I'm supposed to ask you what your heart's desire is. My heart's desire. Um, okay. My heart's desire is to fulfill, you know, his plan and his purpose for my life without um, missing a beat that would um that that i would just you know be totally consumed in his spirit that i am out of the way for him to just fully work through me uh to just you know um fulfill his plan in my life for his kingdom okay so in in what you just said how how would you do that how okay yeah how would you how would you do that living living his love through you I can't how would do you do that i can't i can't do that i have to trust him to do that sure sure but you're you're serving um, right surrender it's it's surrendering you know and um just you know, in that surrender, it is just all the time, you know, mm -hmm. um, trusting him in his mercy and in his grace that um, I don't get in his way. Okay. If that, well, I just, I feel like the answer. Yeah, it, it does. But so here's, here's what I, the, the feeling that I'm getting is that it simply boils down okay. to serving others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the love. Right. That's right. it right there. It's that simple. Right. But, you know, I don't know. I, I, I Maybe this is just a personal thing with me. Maybe it's just that I feel like I need to... Um, Oh my gosh, Penny just said it <laughs> in the chat. She goes, it's like Abraham laying his son on the altar. Mm. Exactly. That's it right there. Lay it's we, you know, like laying down our Isaac, you know. Um wow. That's good, so, Penny. Thank you. Yeah. I heard while well, while well, you guys were talking about that. Um I'm getting feedback. Um, when Nero had the Christians at the uh, Colosseum and he was taking them out and feeding them to the lions, we all know that story, right? Mm -hmm. There were Christians that were so excited to die for the Lord that they were fighting to try to get to the front of the line. Now, I believe what the Holy Spirit showed me is that they, their, he, they allowed him, his spirit to step forward because he knew, he knows he's not afraid of death. He's not afraid of death at all. Right. And so they, they allowed the Holy Spirit to step forward in them, knowing that whatever man could do to them didn't matter be, because he, he, he knows what heaven is like. The Holy Spirit in us is totally aware of what heaven is like. And so mm -hmm. he's not afraid. He is what allowed them. He is what what made it possible for them to step forward and go to the lions. And they knew that that their death was imminent. 
but he right. knew he knew where they were going it was his courage it was his knowledge it was what he knew that allowed them to be able to do it without fear and i think that is that is that exchange that we're talking about i believe that's I'm, the exchange i'm breaking up a few Warren, did i break up oh shoot okay um, yeah oh. that was good too darn <laughs> okay say that again because i okay say that again say, say it again say all right it again. Okay. <laughs> all right so what the holy spirit is showing me is that when so when the christians were going to be fed to the lions at the coliseum by from emperor nero right they, I mean, there were women, children, mm -hmm. men, little children, little children, but they were clamoring to be first, to die first, because they were so excited. They were so excited, but they had no fear because the Holy Spirit, they allowed the Holy Spirit to step forward, be the one that, that went out. Their bodies were just there, right? But the Holy Spirit... Right was leading right. them into heaven. There was no fear. There was nothing. There was no hurt. There was no anger. There was no, you know, just regret. There was nothing because the Holy Spirit right. has all the knowledge of him. I'm sorry. Them. Consumed him, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, exactly. It was like the Holy Spirit just consumed them. Yes. Yes. I believe that's that's what And I'm that's what we you. need. That's what we need to you know. Mm -hmm. Um I I've been thinking too about how um when we do sessions um and we're taking someone through a, a soul wound healing session mm -hmm. and uh one mm -hmm. of the things you know that we do is we pray and ask the Lord to let the person who's been hurt to see um, the person who hurt them to see them through Jesus eyes. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's, I, I'm getting that along with this message with his love, you know, um, because when you see people through his eyes, it's a whole different picture, you know, and it's what, I mean, I have had so many people break down crying and I know you probably have too. Um, when they see their, the person who, who hurt them, uh, when they see him through Jesus' eyes, oh my goodness, you know, they break down crying because yeah, they see that they, it was a, a victim, you know, the person that hurt them was a victim. And I've even had some of them show them, oops, I've even had some of them where the Lord would show them how they became a victim. I mean, it was like a supernatural knowledge that God would give them what had happened to that person, the abuse that they had been under. It's just, you know, so having the love of Jesus, you know, um, come in and replace whatever love that it is that, you know, we have. Uh, and that's what I want. That's what that's my prayer tonight is that I want to replace my love that I have had you know, um, in my life with his love, I, I want, I want to be sure that I have his love. Um, because I think that's what this is, you know, I think, cause you know, in the beginning when we, you know, prophetic powers, understanding mysteries, all knowledge, you know, and have the kind of faith that can, you know, remove mountains. We can have all of those things, but if right. we have love, we have nothing. 
and it, it has to be price low that can be above all of those things. It can only right. be his love. It can't, you know. Yes. Well, and I believe so, that those days, those days are ahead of us. We are going to walk in all of those spiritual gifts. He's showing us this so that we can right. go, okay. So I have this, this, and this. I am like Joshua and Caleb. I can have what he says I can have. I can do what he says I can do. Because he is who he says he right. is. Right. Right. And we, will we can look at the most unloving person. We can look at the most unloving person and know that we can love them completely because we have Christ's love in us giving us the strength to love that unlovable person that needs to be loved. Yeah. And sometimes that mm -hmm. unlovable wow. person that needs to be loved That's is you, is me, is <laughs> money. You know? So you have That's to true. make sure that you That's understand true. that you That's are not unlovable. And, you know, Right. And to, to be able to, you know, uh, forgive ourselves. That's one of the things we've, you know, been going through here uh, in the ministry is um, getting breakthrough for a lot of people that um, they were able to get rid of all the unforgiveness, but yet they were still holding on to unforgiveness against themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I just realized that probably the, the biggest time I need to pray for my love to be replaced with God's love is when I'm driving. I'm not even kidding. Me too. Like, <laughs> just see those people through Christ's eyes. Yeah. You guys are road ragers? <laughs> I don't know if I'd go far as saying okay. road rager. We're road I would say, I'd say road irritated. Yeah, that would probably be a good way to describe it. We're rage adjacent. I see your, your, your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> she ratted us out. <laughs> yes, you are like. Really <laughs> oh, yeah. Woo. I used to be. I used to be. Yeah. Look, if I'm being honest, I, I have said in the past that the, I but, just believe that we should be allowed to drive with some NASCAR rules in place. <laughs> exactly. Get up underneath somebody, put them in the wall, get them out of the way, and, and move on with your day. But <laughs> we're sorry, everybody. Like, well, that's we're okay. We just let. Every once in a while, we have to let loose every once in a while. <laughs> it is the joy of the Lord that is our strength. And laughing right. is good medicine. Mira has made a loaf of sourdough and it smells so good. Yeah. Mira made it. She scored it. We made it oh, together wow. the other day, and it's been sitting, it's been fermenting in the fridge um, for a couple of days. So now I we know. finally baked it, and she just scored it and baked it off, and it looks really beautiful. So, and it smells oh, wow. fantastic. Can we see it? Yeah, you want to bring it? Mira, show us. Okay. Oh, my hair. Might want to hold it closer. Oh, oh wow. Oh, that is pretty. Okay, Got a nice, nice crunchy lovely. crust, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, wow. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, as you can tell by the designs he scored <laughs> on there, she loves sourdough. Oh, yeah. What, what were you saying, Cecilia? <laughs> I said you need to eat that with some warm butter melted on it. Oh, that's going to be Is it so still good. warm? <laughs> Yeah, we just pulled it. Yeah, it, yeah. I hurt my finger. That's why I had to go put it down because it's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Mr. Dale, you're being really quiet. What do you I have to say? Hear from Dale. He might be busy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He might be somewhere congested. Yeah, he Maybe. might be. Yeah. 
We know he's here with us. He might be in listening mode right now, which is just fine. Yeah, yeah that's I okay. Believe he did. Yeah, I, I believe that the Lord is showing us because He's telling He's showing us uh, what our orders are. Does that make sense? Right. Like yep. what our marching orders are. And, we, and the, yes. Joshua and Caleb keeps coming up like over and over again. We are to be like Joshua and Caleb. Oh yeah. We are not I'm hearing that everywhere. Yeah. Oh, you're mm -hmm. hearing it everywhere? I, okay. I'm oh. hearing that everywhere. Yes. Nice. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, I thought I was giving you confirmation. Yeah, yeah. We are definitely uh, in the place of Joshua and Caleb getting ready to enter into that promised land. Um, yeah. And, you know, we have to be like them. We have to stand out and mm -hmm. say, hey, it's good. This is good, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. There's nothing yeah. to be afraid of. There is That's nothing right. to be afraid of. Um, we may have to walk through some stuff, but this is where we need to go. This is right. where we need to go. Right. And just to and walk with That's what he's doing. He's he is, you know, training and teaching and you know, our attitude, everything. Yes. So. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good night, Penny. I think she's saying good night. She's saying good blessings, night. everyone. Oh, yeah. This was okay. good. Good night, Penny. And um, I just want to thank everybody who's been in the chat, who hung with us here tonight. Because I know that you all are praying um, as we probably go through you know, some of this uh, back and forth trying to get to the the answers of what we're looking for. But I think God has been very faithful tonight. I believe that he really, he really showed us something very powerful here. This is kind of almost like, you know, icing a cake. It really yeah. was, you know, because yeah. we can have all of these things. This was so important for him to come in and saying, you can have all of these things, but you have not love. You have nothing. I mean, that's kind of like a stark reality that he hit us with. And um, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit just took us through it and showed us what does, you know, because yeah. I, I know we were like, what does this mean? We have nothing. Okay. What does that mean? We got to know what that means. We, we don't well, want to look at Hollywood. <laughs> look at Hollywood. Look Pardon? at everything they have. Look at Hollywood. Okay. Those folks mm -hmm. have so much, right? And they're constantly all about telling us all the good things that they're doing. Right. But how many people do they mm -hmm. bring into the kingdom of heaven? By with the work that they do. Right. Now, I do I do have to say that I know some of those people out there in Hollywood and they are really walking in the spirit. Um, one of them, uh, I, don't, I can't be free to say names because I do sessions right. with them. Um, uh -huh. But um, our, you know, uh, friends with uh, some of the people from The Chosen, I mean... God's got his people there in Hollywood. We need to pray for them. We need to pray yeah. for the Christians that God has, has in Hollywood because, you know, they're very bold. They're bold and brave, much more than a lot of people in the body of Christ because of the light that they're shining in that dark area that they're in. Um, but there's some churches out there, you know, that are really good around the Los Angeles area too. So yeah, we do need to pray for them. We need to pray for the believers that God has put there. He has us everywhere, you know, Yeah, he has his people everywhere. He does. He does. And I'll they're see going through the stuff Seattle. too. Yeah. The Seattle area. Um, you know, I know y'all, I say all the time, pray for Seattle. Please pray for Seattle. Um, you know, it's hard to be a Christian in this area. It's really hard. And um, we come up against all kinds of, you know, 
persecution. I mean, we really do. And um, God really loves Seattle. Like we can see signs of his love around us all the time. Um, pray for the Christians here, though, right. because so many are. Oh, like, I would have really been upset if I would have known you when that crazy stuff was going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, uh, been, I'd yeah. have been trying to talk you guys into coming. Come down to Florida. Come, you can come stay with me. Get out of there. Well, <laughs> that was bad. Um, uh, Mike and I believe <laughs> that we are not called away from this area. That we're actually called to entrench ourselves into even deeper. And Mira does not feel that way. Right. So she's going to. I understand. That. And um, I mean, there's been times when I've been like, Lord. You know, send me to Costa Rica. I'll go to Costa Rica. I'll buy a coffee plantation. I will live there forever. But he's saying, nope, nope. I've got fertile ground for you right here in Seattle. So, but yeah. I will say it is, you know, there's so much demonic activity, so much witchcraft here. And the, there are so many more Christians here than, than they want to say. And you know where the we were rated the most yeah, underserved area in the country, but we have to we have to lift our voices just like the march around Jericho, like we have to do that. And so Jericho. you know, also mm -hmm. Joshua, right? Joshua led the march around Jericho. So that's what we're doing right now. It's hot in here. Is it me? right? Oh. Um, it might be me. Right. Um, well, but, you know, he, he put you there. He yeah. put you there and he's equipped you and um, you're there for, for a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Just the same as I'm here for a purpose. I've heard some bad stuff about Florida that just kind of um, shook me a little bit yesterday that oh, nice. there are a lot of illegals coming into South Florida right now. Well, yeah, because they want to turn, they want to get rid of the the Bible believing areas in this country. Mm -hmm. But I believe, so, you know, Satan's going to try. Satan's going to try. <clears throat> but I rebuke him in the name of Jesus. I pull down every plant. I do, because Jesus said I have the authority to cast out demons, right? I rebuke. Right. Any unclean spirit in my area, I rebuke them in Jesus' name. I pull down every bit of influence that the enemy has in Washington State. And, you know, Cecilia, I stand with you in rebuking any unclean spirit that's trying to come against Florida. I stand against it in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. And I stand on the yes. authority that Jesus has given me. Jesus. I have the authority. Yeah. So people stand in your authority and, and cast There's out Dale. Demons. I heard I heard Dale. Dale. Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Amen. Amen. You have your power and authority. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm listening, Are you Dale. For me? I know you got so I don't know if you've been able to I Sounds like you've been busy tonight, Dale. I don't know if you've been able to hear all of this tonight, but we were just kind of inquiring. Moms want to know, what does Mr. Dale think tonight? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm fun. not sure. I'm ready to. <laughs> well, I, I always thought about, the, you know, chapter 13. That's what I'm thinking about, about the... Uh, you're, you're more than tinkling brass, you know, tinkling brass is just the sound that's loud and bold and, mm -hmm. and it sounds good and it's gone. I mean, it, 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 it comes and goes, it, it goes as fast as it comes and we got to learn God's love and know that right. that's what's important. Yeah. And sometimes you can put on the, put on the clothes of a Christian and look like a Christian and act like a Christian, but are you, are you actually what you're supposed to be yeah yeah but you were doing well there kimberly i didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> right no i just wanted to hear what you yeah. had to say yeah 
I just, you know, yeah. Yeah. Everybody needs to stand in their authority and cast out unclean spirits wherever they are. You have the authority. You do. Right. Don't be afraid right. to use it. Yes. Yeah. We need to start encouraging people all the time. We need to start doing that, Kimberly, what you're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's our call. What does he say? He says, right. Lay hands on the sick, raise the dead, um, heal, the heal the lepers, cast out devils. We're supposed to do all those things. That's right. like our marching orders. All those yeah. things. And whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. We need to do a lot of loosing. You know what? We need to start. We do. We do a lot of rebuking and a lot of binding. We need to start doing more loosing. Yeah. Yeah. So let's yeah. think about that. What can we start loosing? Holy oh, Spirit, show us. Yeah. Yeah, the truth. We need to we need to teach people the actual truth of what God says, who He says we are. We need to loose exactly. we need to loose the truth on the people. They don't know. They, they we don't right. we have an identity crisis in the church. We have no idea. Yes, we do. <clears throat> There's an identity crisis everywhere, but the identity crisis among Christians is is one of the worst. Because yeah. we need to know who we are in Christ to be able to move forward and be used by him to be those right. vessels. We need to we need to learn teach people how to study the word, not just so well. Um, Sorry. That's OK. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. We need to dig deeper into the word. Y'all need to really dig deep. Amen. Because it's so deep. And just skimming over the top is the reason why we don't understand our identity. Because we think we've heard it over and over again, but we are not being washed by the water of the word. We're just standing on the beach looking at the water. Well, yep, there's the water. There you know, it is. You know, that identity crisis is a is a massive problem because how how is somebody else going to believe us? that Jesus Christ is the right way if we don't believe it ourselves. Amen. Right. Right. That's exactly right. And it, it's no, there's no, it doesn't, there, there's no question in my mind why the rest of the world has an identity crisis, or at least the rest of the country, because the church, the Western church is in such an identity crisis right now that how are they to convince anybody otherwise? Right. Yeah. Yeah. If they were trying to convict you of being a Christian, would they have any proof? Right. Oh, there you are. Okay. And that, that's not a judgment on anybody in particular. I'm just saying it's something to think about, yeah, right? That, you know, we, we have to, we have to do a better job. Mm -hmm. we, we have to. There, there's yeah. just, yeah. you know, we, we need to do what yeah. we talk about. And tonight. encourage people. You know, know, there's so many people out there. There's so many people out there that um, feel so alone uh, because they may be, you know, a lot of them that we see, you know, are maybe the only one in their family that are saved, you know, and living for the Lord and, you know, that's a hard place. -y. Um, I was there once and uh, I'm still kind of there with part of my family, but <laughs> thank God my uh, son and my daughter love the Lord. I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of people out there that feel very, you know, um, shut out, you know, um, and that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be that body that reaches out to those members, you know, that feel alone and, uh, you know, they're battling on their own. It's, it's horrible, you know, to not have anybody <clears throat> that you can, you know, pray with and talk to and, you know, just get that encouragement uh, from because the enemy is out there, you know, 
attacking all of us. We all go through spiritual warfare. And so to be alone is real hard to be going through spiritual warfare. Yeah. So we're not that being said. Yeah, that that being said, let's pray for those people tonight before we close out here. Uh, let's pray for the, you know, believers that um, are really feeling alone and under spiritual warfare. Uh, so, Father God, I just pray right now, Lord, you see, I believe that there's someone's listening right now that um, is feeling very much alone. I believe that's why your Holy Spirit had me speak this, Lord, and uh, you know who you are. And um, I'm so sorry that you feel that way. I'm so sorry that you feel like there is nobody, um, no friend, uh, no family that uh, can be there with you to, you know, for you to just talk to someone. Um, but you can come here. We're here two times a week on Monday nights and on Friday nights. And uh, it looks like we're going to be doing Wednesday nights too. So eight o'clock central, uh, three times a week, you can, you can come here and, you know, put your, put your thoughts in the chat room, talk to us here, uh, put your prayer requests in the chat room. Um, you are not alone. For one, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Um, he has had me saying this for over a week now uh, to people to know that he is right there with you right now. Right now, he is right there with you. Uh, he's wanting so much for his children to know, I am here. I am right here with you right now, right now, just you and me. You know, if it's just you and him, he's there with you and talk to him and uh, he will answer you in ways that he will uh, let you know how real and how much he is there with you. And so I just pray for you, marriages and going through divorces and trying to raise your children and, um, you know, the other partner is just not there and you're having to do everything all on your own. Uh, God is there with you, and his word promises you that he will provide every need that you have. And um, that's his word. That's his promise. And he says put us put, to put him in remembrance of his word. So when you pray about the needs that you have, you know, just say, Lord, you, you said and promised me in your word that you would provide all of my needs. And quit worrying about it. Don't listen to the enemy. The enemy's going to try to come into your thoughts and, you know, just be the doomsdayer. Uh, recognize that those voices, those are demonic spirits. Recognize them. Take your power and authority that we've been talking about. Jesus said that he gives you all his power and authority. Use that power and authority. When the enemy comes at you, rebuke them. Yeah. Stand your ground. Say, get out of here. I rebuke you. Go back to the dry places that you came yeah. from, and I bind you there. Don't you ever return and come back to me again. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to pray that prayer for you right now. So I want you to pray it with me, though. I don't want to just be here praying for you. I want yeah. you to start stepping out in faith. Use that power and authority that he has given you. So right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, I just rebuke these demonic spirits that are coming up against you and uh, lying and putting thoughts into your mind, trying to make you feel that, you know, everything is failing and that there is no hope. We come against all the spirits right now in the name of Jesus we rebuke you and we command you to go back to the dry places that you came from everything that you brought in with you all kinds of sickness diseases depression confusion all those other spirits that you brought in with you you have to take back out with you and we bind you don't ever come back again in the name of Jesus Lord we ask right now that you would send as many warring angels as it takes 
takes to enforce this and oversee this in the spiritual realm to make sure that they abide by what we have spoken with your power and authority. Yes, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just ask that your Holy Spirit, uh, Father God, would just manifest to these um, people, Lord, whoever this is that you're ministering to right now. Um, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would manifest yourself to them in ways, Father God, that they will know that they know that they know that you are right there with them right now. In Jesus' name. Yes. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes. So, yeah. Does anybody have anything else the Holy Spirit might be putting on your hearts tonight? I don't think so. I think I left it all on the field. If not, we can go. <laughs> <laughs> I do, you know, I do, I, I do too. I feel really good. I feel very much. Re everything's been released. Um, yeah. So, Mike, do you want to lead us in the? Um, Lord's Prayer? Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. So our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Dale, do you want to close us out before yes. we say good night to everybody? Father God in heaven, Lord, thank you just for tonight. Thank you for your, your wisdom and your power. And thank you for the Holy Spirit that teaches us and Lord, we pray that we hunger more and more for you and wake up to the things you're trying to tell us and uh, not just be spiritually uh, in, 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 a, in a, like zombies, Lord, and we were fully awake and fully aware and we're your children. Lord, thank you for all the teaching and the, just the things that you give us, Lord, and, you know, knowing that you are the, the real, true, core, uh, real source of love. Yes. Lord, we pray for the nation of Israel for America and for everybody around the world just to to hunger for you. Lord, thank you for Cecilia, Mike, and Kimberly and everything that you do. And Lord, we pray that we go to sleep thinking of you and wake up thinking of you yes. with you on our mind. Lord, just uh, <clears throat> Lord, thank you for the blessings and the, uh, the covering of the blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We give you all the glory and all the all honor the and all the praise. Yes. yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Well, everybody, good night. And thank you for joining us. And yes. um, I just pray that this has been a blessing for you. I pray that the Holy Spirit has taught you things here tonight. I pray that you've received revelations through his word about his love, about his sacrificial love. And yes. that love is what we need inside of us. And uh, so, um, and I'm going to say it again. I know that it's a word that kind of, you know, people get uncomfortable with, but the Holy Spirit has been having me say it is if there's anything that you need to repent of mm -hmm. to get yourself right with God, do it now. Do it right now. Don't wait. Uh, we don't know what tomorrow brings, um, but we know that there's a shaking going on. And it's. Yes. I believe it's begun. I believe today was a day that um, things are going to start shaking uh, with everything that happened uh, with Israel. And if you didn't catch this, go back to the beginning and watch this because there's some uh, really breaking news. I have to say it is breaking news and uh, it is God moving without a doubt. Uh, there's no coincidence to what's happened.
And so if you didn't catch that yet, go back and listen to the recording because it is yes. important. Amen. Uh, so thank you. And we love you and God bless you. And um, we will see you possibly Wednesday. Just watch my uh, page. I'll be putting up an announcement if we're going to be there Wednesday or not. But definitely we will be here Friday for Shabbat. And uh, so we look forward to that. We we'll always look forward to Shabbat. That's always an awesome day. week. So we love you and God bless you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Oh, stupid.